So we're going to take input from a file, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a scanner. The reason we're going to use a scanner is because you used it before, and it's a very convenient way to take input from a file. So here, this line, I built a scanner using system in, which we've done before. It's how to read from the keyboard. You do need to import Java util scanner. Now I'll take care of the error. Now instead of taking input from system in, let's take it from uh, a file. Actually, first let's sout what we get. Uh, let's say get. Uh, let's see, scan dot get line. Next line. All right, so. We'll just run this. It's going to grab off the input and then print out what we get. Let's get crazy and do this twice. Now, there's going to be no prompt here, uh, so I'm just going to have to remember that I'm calling a next line. Already exists. Okay, so there's no output here that it's waiting for me to type things in. So I'll just type things, I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna print out what it just got. Now notice I just typed in one word, no spaces, and now I'm gonna type in things are neat, exclamation point. And notice that it grabbed all of that. So these are called, well, we're not gonna get much into tokens and tokenizing, how to break input into pieces that are useful called tokens, uh, but just, there's a next line uh, and next int, and there's a lot of different nexts that you can use the scanner. And I'm just gonna do next line to grab one line at a time. Okay, so instead of using system in, I'm now gonna use file two. And now <clears throat> there's an error right here, we have add a throws clause, or I could surround with a try catch. Now notice it already broke the declaration of the scanner and the instantiation of the scanner into two separate places. Uh, and right here, it's gonna probably warn us that uh, may not be initialized. Yeah, variable scan might not have been initialized. So to, a few different ways to deal with it. Probably take that and put it up inside the try would be a good way to deal with it. Okay, so now we're gonna to need to open that file up. These are all my recordings. Where are we? No. Still no. Ah. All right, I guess we'll just navigate there slowly. Hopefully it's in here. Eventually, all right. So I think we did tacos are good, yep. All right, now if I run it here, there's nothing actually in the file, so we're gonna have some problems. So I'm gonna open up this file, a few ways to do it. I could double click it, let Notepad open it up. I'm not gonna get into the encoding of files, uh, but if you open up at certain uh, apps, it may encode it differently. So I'm gonna type things on the first line. Things are neat, neat. I'm gonna put an extra return in here and hit save. Uh, it's important that there's a return at the end of the first line and a return at the end of the second line. That's how, and I hit save, so I'll close this, just make sure. And we're gonna run this, and I should get the same output we got last time, but instead of reading from the console, I read from the file. So that's how you can read from the file. Now, there may not be two lines in the file, so how would you deal with that? And let's not print that out. We'll just print out what's actually in the file with next line. So we can go while scan dot has next line. Where are we? Has next line. So if I'm going to use next line, it's a good idea to use this conditional method. This returns a true or false, a Boolean. So if there is a next line, it'll be true. And then I'll read the next line here. 
And the other thing that happens is it moves the position of the file forward to the line after that line. And so if I run this, I should get the exact same output. <clears throat> things, things are neat. Okay, great. We can add a bunch more to the file. I don't have some stuff to copy and paste, so I'll put a blank line, two blank lines, three blank lines. And let's end the file on a T instead of a return. Now I'm gonna save that and I'll leave it open and hit run. Okay, so we got things, things are neat. And then notice it got the empty space right here and then things, things are neat to, or I should say the new lines is what it got. And then the three new lines uh, and then end it right there. So it looks like you don't have to end it on a new line, that's fine. There's a few other uh, ways to read with a scanner. You could just do scanner next. Oops, went too far. And if I run it here, so next basically grabs the next word, where things words are separated by uh, either any of the white space, a space, a new line, or a tab. And so here we go. These are just the words right here. And you could do next, has next int, uh, has next double, float, blah, 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 etc., etc. And notice I never closed any files. You could definitely close a file. And how do you do that? Well, if you're going to close it, you probably should... Uh, Close the scanner, so let's see, scan close, and then if I wanted to close the file, file to dot, don't delete, delete is not the same as close. Uh, you may want to delete it, but that's not a closing of the file. Huh. Okay, now apparently we don't close it this way. All right, so I'll figure out how to close the file. Uh, now, <clears throat> the file's not still open when the program, when, when the execution is finished. The scanner, even though I didn't close it, the scanner doesn't exist after. And the scanner, let's see, was declared here. So the scanner will stop existing right here at this bra close bracket. Also, the file that we opened will automatically close when we reach this close bracket. So Java does a lot of cleanup for you. So a lot of times you just have to initialize or open things. You don't necessarily have to close them all the time. So just keep that in mind. And this is how we can read the input from a file. There's lots of other ways, input buffers. Uh, you can move the cursor, uh, the virtual cursor around inside of a file, both forward and backward and you can add and remove content from files. And uh, I've found though that just using the scanner, to me at least, is the easiest way to read information from a file because you can read, instead of just one character or one byte at a time, you can read words, numbers, lines, uh, any of that. So for me, the scanner is always the way I read information from files, but it's not it's not the only way to do it, and in certain situations, it's not the best way to do it. It's just, at least for what I tend to do, it's the most convenient way for me to access. And then we'll cover writing next.